Folks, I hope that you are ready, because today we have an incredibly interesting Lanfang save game sent to me by Henry. A Lanfang save game where Henry gained independence from the Great Qing and subsequently, as you do, of course, lost half of his GDP. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on in this particular save game, a lot that we can talk about, and I think a really, really interesting fix that we can achieve. As you can see, Henry wasn't all that bad. This is a learn the game playthrough, so be easy on Henry. And you can see that he still blobbed out quite a bit here, both in Borneo and in Celebus. Now, as always, as we try to understand things, we need to try to understand the very basic stats of the country. Our capital is Pontianic and we are in a bad spot. First of all, what is noticeable is that out of all capacities, bureaucracy is the only one that is negative. We do have three incorporated states. I have to assume that is basically West, North and East and Borneo, and if we reduce any of this, so any of these institutions, I don't even think that that is worth it. We don't have enough population where the institutions cost us so much bureaucracy that it pushes us into the negatives. It's actually the opposite here. Usually we would never look at this, but right now our two generals and our trade routes are costing us all of the bureaucracy that we need to collect taxes and of course to run more trade routes. So what we're going to do first of all is I think we need to keep in our mind that if we get more free trade agreements with our main trading partners, all of this bureaucracy cost will go away. But I will of course be honest with you, regularly when we look at the GDP and it sacks down like this, this means we need to substitute our former market, which was the Great Qing that we just left, we need to substitute it with more trade. So I think more trade is likely to be the answer. The other thing that immediately is noticeable is, yeah, I mean... Uh, everything about the budget? Uh, no, nothing here is really looking good, okay? We're looking at a situation where we don't have a rich population that could consume goods on their own, where we don't have a big GDP that gives us minting, and ultimately we have max taxes, and yet, obviously, I mean, if nobody has money, what are we going to be collecting here, right? We need to change something about our income situation, and there will be a legitimate way and a Lan Fang way, you're gonna see that as we go through the video, but we definitely have to get up our national revenue, otherwise we are doomed. A population in general, it has to be said, is absolutely minuscule. I mean, look at this. We have 2.27 million people and a pop growth is a laughable 3.73k per year. This means nothing. And if we are Lanfang, then we have to now very, very heavily go into a position where we accept migrants, be it mi migrants from an inner market migration, if we enter another market, or be it migrants via migration targets. The other thing that needs to be highlighted here as well is that we very clearly have a very, very bad workforce ratio, which means we want that workforce ratio to go up so that we can get more people into work and then with those people can build more prosperity that again attracts more people. We need to clear up our actual population growth and obviously we need to clear up how much people hate us. I mean, my God, in just the last year alone, over half a million people became radicals. Um, yeah, because of the standard of living right here. We need to address this, and I think we will be addressing this when we restore our economy. Now, to finish this analysis, though, we need to now understand what our politics look like so that we know whether we can attract migrants or whether we need to massively reform. First of all, as I said, the trade unions are incredibly important to us because if we get them to activate solidarity, this will mean our workforce ratio will be much, much better and we would finally be in a position where we can at least alleviate some of our population pressure. This is already good that they are this strong because it means that if there are laws that we need to pass, we have a very strong progressive alliance. The other side here is, of course, our existing laws, and I gotta tell you, that is a pretty good law screen right here. We're taking a look at a country that is incredibly progressive, that can welcome all kinds of migrants and definitely needs them, even guaranteed liberties has been passed, no migration controls, okay, fair enough, doesn't really matter if we were on migration controls because, well, we don't have any discriminated pops right here, meaning it doesn't matter at all. The other thing that really has to be highlighted is that we have no social policies whatsoever, which is good and bad. It means there's no unemployment benefits, it means that there is no minimum wage, but obviously this won't really make you know, the trade unions very happy. We might want to pass compulsory primary school just to make them ecstatic, so that we can then actually go on and collect everything related to the workforce ratio. The last thing here is just laissez-faire, free trade and proportional taxation. We're looking at a situation where our investment pool has the potential to be massive, our trade uh, arrangements has a potential to be massive as well, and where we need people to be rich if we want to make any money off of taxation. What all of this means right now is that we do not really have an at-home consumption base that makes it so that, for example, we could sell furniture enough for food industries, 
All of these buildings will go bankrupt because our people at home are simply too poor to buy these things. This means we need to sell these things via trade and then when it comes to our production here, as you can see, we literally have no iron production whatsoever right now, um, although... Wow, yeah, we do have this, but this basically pr uh, creates absolutely nothing. We need to both, and this is awful, you never want to be in this situation, but we need to import the basic goods and then export the, you know, further creations, which is, for example, the food right here, because we do not have the potential for either at home. Now, when we take a look at our trade, we can immediately see that we have a bunch of inactive trade routes with the Great Ching. This is inactive because the Great Ching is in a position where they no longer have an interest down here, because we were their interest, and we don't have an interest up there. Now, if I'm not mistaken, um, then we can't have an interest up there because, yep, indeed, we are just a tiny unrecognized power. This means this trade is gone and it's not coming back. At the same time, I do think, looking over this, obviously we are on free trade, meaning there are no tariffs here. But, looking over this, um, the British, the Spanish and the Portuguese are our main trading partners in Europe, meaning, if we can, I would be very interested in getting some free trade agreements with them. Um, what I will do here though is, because if we hover over this, you can see that we are over our required convoy limit, I will get rid of some of the tools requirements. We can use these tools ourselves, I'm sure. Uh, I'm going to cancel Spain here, I think, and maybe Portugal. That gives us some more bureaucracy, and more importantly, it makes it so that we, of course, also use fewer convoys. And these convoys are important because we literally can't reach our colony right here for the moment. Anyway, the way it is right now, we need more convoys and we need these convoys quick because clearly, if we are in a position where economy can neither produce what we need at the very basics because we have, for example, no logging camps whatsoever or no iron mines whatsoever, if we can't even do that, we need to import it and we are then using that stuff to produce things such as, for example, groceries and we can't really sell that anywhere because our population is too poor. This means both inwards and outwards we need a lot of convoys and that means the highest priority right now is actually getting these up. See, I was thinking about this. I saw here that we have a fairly low market access, but I don't think financing the railways here, we're currently not even subsidizing it, is the answer. I think we need to improve our port's ability to create infrastructure. And the only way to really do this right now, since we are going bankrupt, is to create an industrial port. Yeah, we're gonna uh, definitely do this and then... We need steamers that we're obviously not producing ourselves, we don't have the technology there. Um, let's import these from the French and the British, hopefully we can get enough. The other thing that I really want to do is honestly just retire these generals. I don't care about the armed forces, the bonuses that we can get from the armed forces aren't big enough and getting rid of the bureaucracy draw here of these generals is really good because that means we can just do more trading once we have the convoys. The other thing is, while we get rid of the generals, you know what, why don't we just reduce our barracks down here. I'll be honest with you, if any of our neighbors attack us, we are relying on somebody coming to save us. Our infantry and such, it's not good enough to defend us, so we might as well downscale it a bit. The other thing that we really need to do here is, so I definitely want to tax services. It still leaves us in the negatives, but I think that is actually good. Uh, okay, so... This is trade fixed at least to a meaningful degree. You can see that we have a lot here in terms of, you know, us actually having shortages. But let's just take a moment here to hopefully get the requirement for our uh, new port system here so we get more convoys and then can actually trade more. The other thing, and I mentioned this at the start, is that we very much want the trade unions to be happy with us. If the trade unions are happy with us, this means that we get their bonus and solidarity is just so important. I'm seeing this right here. This is definitely going to be a big, big source of radicalization if we don't fix it. And I don't think migration controls does anything because this only, you know, really does something for discriminated pops and we don't have discriminated pops since we are multicultural. So I'm thinking if I pass this and the trade unions like it, they will already be up to four and then it will just need like one or two more reforms and we will get them to be loyalist. I think this is actually the playthrough where we will go bankrupt. You know, usually we are also here at this limit right there and we make a way out of it without ever going bankrupt, but... I don't think that's working as intended. I think sometimes the game designers just say, hey, you should probably go bankrupt. Ultimately, going bankrupt obviously is bad. People get mad. 42,000 of them indeed will radicalize, which, I'll be honest with you, I don't think matters all that much. But more importantly, it takes away offense, defense, prestige, loan interest rate gets added, and a state construction efficiency modifier that is really hefty. But I gotta tell you, I think this is our easy way out here. We need some money so that we can build up some basic buildings that then make us money and that should allow us to get out of this. 
the more we actually have a function economy, which we simply do not have right now because we can't build anything, but we need to build things so that these shortages can end, the more we have a functioning economy, the more will this massive investment pool actually fill. Right now we're barely making anything, Trade Center and Logging Camp are the only buildings currently paying at all into the investment pool. So I'm thinking um, we should probably go, go bankrupt and then immediately start building. You know what, I'll just press this button. I like that it doesn't even ask you, do you really want to do this? It just lets you do it. And all of a sudden, we actually are positive. And this is a big one. Because now we can go on and A, finish these learning the game missions, I suppose. But more importantly, it means that we can build some basic buildings that strengthen us. Now, here comes the illegitimate part. I am still serious when I'm saying that, you know, for example, with our new supply network, we can basically fix most of our shortages. But there's something much more important about Lanfang that Henry here has clearly overlooked. Lanfang has a crazy amount of gold mines. We got them right here in Western Borneo and we got them here in Northern Borneo. And these are really good because the way they work, and let's just uh, build a couple of them here, by which I mean literally all of them. The way they work is that they don't just generate rich pops because obviously gold is a commodity that is very valuable that you can simply produce and your pops will benefit from it. But they also add minting. Seven levels on these production methods here can generate about 10,000 bucks every week in minting. And 10,000 bucks with this country where we have a national revenue of 18,000 bucks is insane. Oh yeah, and look at that. Henry still was on the very first production method here, wooden buildings. And that is even worse if you consider that we had no wood whatsoever. Now, we don't really have all that much in terms of iron either, but we can import it. And obviously that is what we're doing and we're also producing it right here. We need to focus on getting these construction sectors up because the sooner we actually finish our gold mines here, the better will we be off. Oh, and that was pretty fast. We now have migration controls. Obviously, that makes the trade unions a bit happier. Now, in 1882, we will actually have additional elections. I think what I want to do right now, I'm going to leave the government as it is. It's not perfect, but we can't get it any higher. And legitimate government would be cr it would be great, trust me, but it's just not doable right now. We are going to pass compulsory primary school. This gives us a very hefty bonus to the trade unions and fundamentally just makes it so that they give us the solidarity bonus. That is exactly what we need. Compulsory uh, primary school doesn't really do anything in the negative. It gets rid of mortality, which is good, because then people can grow much, much faster. And dependence income goes down, but even that, I mean, right now it's basically nothing. Let's move on here. I think this will be absolutely great. All right, and as now the very first gold mine's finished, you can see we have a good amount of construction now, but obviously it can always be better. We can take a look at these gold mines, not just producing money for the people working in it, but directly producing minting. And this is just really, really important. I mean, our economy here is basically being kickstarted despite no product ultimately coming out. And by the way, I will take that trade agreement. Very, very good idea. We have no tariffs anyway, right? But yeah, look at this. The minting is just piling up and we're only halfway film, uh, filled. We're already building the next gold mine here. These are some of the most important building for quick success as Lanfang. Oh yeah, and look at that. Solidarity is now active, giving us a plus 20% workforce ratio. You can see it here as well. Roughly every week we get about 200 people maybe, maybe sometimes just 150 people. And they then immediately go onto the fields, so onto the subsistence farms, but they will be available as workers long term. We are generating workers right now and that is very, very important. I believe every year we should get 1% additional workforce ratio out of these people. It's Let's check this out. He was at 25%, of course, initially, and now is at 28.7%. Yeah, and they're not doing so hot. They're very, very poor here, but the whole tendency is excellent. And there you go. We got compulsory primary school, which, of course, means that the trade unions will stay exactly where they are for quite some time. I have to admit that uh, the trade unions really fell off here. I hope that they're going to come back because this reduced, of course, the 20% bonus to just 10%. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how it is. Right now, we will continue building these mines. And you can see we're now already positive in the monetary field. I had to reduce some of our construction, but that's okay. We are getting there. See, and this is what I mean. So right now, we have 7,200 bucks that come from minting just from these gold mines. And we're still three levels away from being done. And then we got North Borneo. That is a massive impact. Right now, in minting, you can see it really dominates just how much money we get. But more importantly, it also, of course, creates investors. With our laws, we get 2,000 bucks just out of this gold mine building. I'll be honest with you, we are looking at a good future because our investment pool is only going to become bigger.
Oh, and just like that, we've already overtaken our old uh, GDP. Yeah, this is going okay. Um, the end goal of this, by the way, is that I want to be big enough, right now they wouldn't accept it, that I want to be big enough to join the Customs Union of Great Britain. We need a higher GDP, we need them to like us and so on, but once we can join, I swear, we are going to bleed them dry. We're going to basically get everybody to come to our islands and just live here. Oh, and I think we're having luck with this election. You can see that we're already like constructing much, much faster and so on. But much more importantly, the Social Democratic Party now it has really good momentum. We appear to be winning most of the votes, which would lock us in in the plus 20 position in terms of percentage, meaning we get 20% in workforce ratio. This would be ideal if the elections actually come out like this. And there we have the election results. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the trade unions shooting up to 36.6%. That is exactly the way I would like to see this. Now, let me just ask, does anybody else want to join this party? No, but look at that. Oh my god. It's so good when you win an election. The, the legitimate government all of a sudden that is in here means that we can start gathering loyalists and... I think, I, I'm not going to change too much about the laws here. Now, it's a bit weird to be social democrat and do free trade and laissez-faire, but it's so vital to everything we're doing here. I don't think we're changing a thing. The poor laws are also pretty decent, nothing to complain about there. The most important part to note now is the following. Look at this minting. Our gold fields and gold mines in North Borneo and West Borneo are absolutely massive. We have gained about 2,000 in GDP minting, but it doesn't compare at all compared to our gold mines. Now this means that we have now what will kickstart our economy, now we actually need to start building some. As it stands, I have to import very basic things such as for example wood. What I'd like to do is to not use my convoys up for this, you can see I built some ports as well, we have many more convoys now than we had before. I would like to build a native basic industry. This means logging, this means iron, this means lead and sulfur must now be produced at home. Let's start with logging right here. Uh, these three states right here are our incorporated states, meaning that they will produce at a higher cost because they are being taxed compa uh, compared to right here. Which means that we don't really want to clash in anything production-wise here. Iron goes exclusively here, nothing goes into North Borneo and so on. Let's start an actual economy here. Jesus Christ, you know what, I didn't even notice this. We have now reached 20 million GDP and we are number two in GDP per capita. Obviously, it can get way better, but check this out. Yeah, our standard of living has not just rebounded, it's better than ever. Let me just double check this. Uh, we got a couple of pops that are still under the expected standard of living, but of course we are actually giving them some sort of welfare payments. Now anyway, the power plants are done, and that means I can actually just straight up push it towards electric sawmills, and I might even be able to... For example, push you towards... Oh, we can't do that yet. Ah, we're, we're going to do this eventually. We're going to become the power central. Oh, this is driving me crazy. We are so, so close. Minus two, and then we could join the customs union. I will gladly give them an obligation. It does not matter to me. But as soon as we can join the British customs union, we will straight up pop off. I really, really want to do that. Oh my god. They actually contacted me. I am so grateful. So I, I really want to go through this with you just so that you understand how massive this is. What we did this entire time, and I mean we grew really nicely, nothing wrong with this. We are now number one GDP per capita and you can see this here as well because we only have 37,000 peasants left. Which means I am almost running out of people. I have been reducing, you know, I've been automating that sort of stuff so that people aren't all too uh, occupied so that they can work somewhere else. Our economy runs pretty well. Yes, there is, you know, every now and again, some things go negative. Don't worry about it. We could optimize this even further. But what matters here is that we're looking now at an economy that is fairly self-sufficient. We're producing our own iron, our own rubber. We're producing our own electricity as well as our own logging camps and lead mines. We've done all of these things, but obviously we have some money makers. I mean, the gold mines are quite obvious. These are alone bring in 12,000 in minting and... When we take a look at the investment pool, we can see that we are now getting, let's see, 4,650 uh, 4, bucks just from the gold mines into the investment pool. The glassworks have taken off and so on. But this economy is nothing compared to when we joined the British market, which of course, you know, sometimes they will produce something more cheaply than we can produce it. But when we joined that market, 
and just flood their market with our goods that are fairly cheap, that are fairly underproduced, man, this standard of living will be absolutely nothing in comparison to where we are going to be in just a second. Let's take a look at this. We're going to join the customs union here. Obviously, at first, our GDP will take a bit of a nosedive, but then we look at this, for example, and we see that they have a massive, massive request in electricity, and we're producing this electricity in the colonies, which means that we can underbid theirs. We are about to essentially send the entire British Empire to be bankrupt because we are going to produce everything cheaper. And you know what that means? Well, that will mean, yep, per year 150,000 are migrating to West Borneo. Uh, let's take a look here. 140,000 in East Borneo. And I think that is it for the moment. But these numbers are going to change. I am really looking forward to this. Look at this pop explosion. Isn't this insane? <laughs> the way it started to go up here is just so beautiful. Look at this. We discovered oil in East Borneo, and I will feed the British Empire oil. <laughs> We're printing pure money with the power plants right here. And don't ask me how the power gets to Britain, okay? It doesn't matter. Our weekly balance is plus 20,000. My god, this is beautiful. If this isn't a great curve, then I haven't seen a great curve, I gotta be honest with you. And of course, there just had to be a rebellion in Britain. <laughs> just as we're completely dominating this market, it turns out there's actually a rebellion. Now, we're still doing pretty okay. Let's hope that it stays that way. Man, I don't like that because I am not consuming that oil. I'm not consuming that rubber or this power. What we have built right here is essentially the perfect Landfang. Yes, there is an issue where Britain every now and again may have a rebellion, but honestly, it worked out just fine. It's just, you know, a war, and then when it's over, you are completely good. This is what matters. We are getting a higher workforce ratio, which contributes to this massive population increase actually leading to workers, because obviously all of them start shifting to the desired workforce ratio. On top of that, we are getting a bigger investment pool contribution thanks to our, well, capitalists at this point actually liking us. Let me just take a look at this right here. Our investment pool is now growing by 73,000 every single week. This gives us a pretty big potential when it comes to actually building. And then last but not least, the propagandists, I wish they were over 20%, same of course for the industrialists, the propagandists are making it so that we have a higher migration attraction, which again continues to give us more population. You need to understand that we aren't actually financing ourselves via the national revenue. We aren't building with that, we aren't doing much with this. This means that we can absolutely have massively profitable things in this unincorporated territory. We're not collecting any taxes, but that is good, because it technically makes the cost of operation even lower, which then in turn, just from these power plants, it brings 30,000 bucks into the investment pool. And if you take a look at it, our investment pool right now is collecting 112,000 bucks. The oil rigs and the power plants alone are carrying this investment pool. As long as we're in the British market, we can build up. After that, we might be losing out on a bunch of the power plant pot uh, potential. But right now, it will allow us to collect all of this population and go on and collect all of this GDP. All right, and now I think the time is right that we try to claim some more territory. Kutai and Banjar right here would immediately be incorporated states since it's all East Borneo. And more importantly, I think they have a lot of oil. So you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and actually try to claim it in the hope that, yeah, nobody here actually jumps in. But we'll see. I think we can actually be fine if Russia jumps in. Surely Great Britain, France or Germany would aid us. Oh wow, this actually got a whole lot hotter than I thought it would be. Austria sided with our enemies and that meant Germany came in on our side. And I'll be honest with you, I have more trust in Germany winning against Austria than I have trust that Austria could have a big upset here. Yeah, we are, I think we're going to win this, but it's going to be a bit weird. At the very least, we're also going to collect North Borneo thanks to this actually becoming a war rather than just being... Yep, okay. Well, we immediately won, I guess. <laughs> They immediately just withdrew all their troops, all right. Yeah, look at the Germans destroying the Austrians here. Um, this is an interesting war because it will lead to a humiliation for Austria. Uh, doesn't really impact us all too much, but I think it might impact the balance of power right here in Europe. Listen, folks, I'm just saying, is this an insane number or is this an insane number? This right here is a real cash crop economy, except we don't have any crops, we just have oil and electricity. Jesus Christ. I, I love this GDP. I love everything going on there. And the funniest part to me actually is that if we take a look at this, you can see that the capitalists that are really making money here are English Protestant, Bornean Sunni, and then only comes Hakka Protestant, which is us. 
we are in an interesting spot as Lanfang. Folks, it's 1910 and a whole bunch of stuff has happened. I didn't do much more than conquer East Borneo when it comes to expansion, but I did leave the British market. And I think we need to talk ourselves through this here. As you can see, what mostly has happened is that I left the British market and then started balancing everything via, yeah, this massive amount of shipping lanes. We are in a really good spot at this point. Obviously, I had to decimate our power plant economy quite a bit. Now they are making more profit, but that doesn't change that the power plant economy has gifted us this massive, massive, massive investment pool and now allows us to actually get even more money thanks to our production that isn't power plants being able to be exported, which then directly gives us 239,000 in this trade center. I'll be honest with you, I don't think we can keep up with this um, when it comes to the income that we're making here in the investment pool. This would be around the time that you probably want to also decide to go communist. Obviously, we're not going to be doing that here because that is a lot of things to be done. But I will be telling you right now, though, is that I will be expanding all of these ports. We are now on the highest form. You can see it right here on the modern port so that we can get even more trade routes just so that we can see how much we can push our GDP up again, you know, to where we used to be before we left the British market in a short term. Oh yeah, and good thing that we got out of that British market. I think we may have even been the one that collapsed it here. <laughs> They're having another rebellion, and I'm pretty sure that they largely are collapsing because they just do not have enough convoys, and I was giving them most of the convoys. I mean, look at it right now. We have 128,000 convoys and are actively using 75,000. Yeah, this is a very pecu a peculiar position. Ultimately, of course, when you become as big as we were, we were at around 180 million GDP, you definitely want to leave that market, and while we haven't even recovered our GDP yet, I mean, yeah, just look at how well we are doing in comparison to literally anybody in the British market right here. Oh, and there you go, Japan just back down. I just challenged them from Kyushu, nobody else came in to defend them, and all of a sudden we're sitting on a massive, massive influx of population here with 5.15 million. Um, we're going to use this, hopefully. I just want a bunch of people to basically migrate into our core territory. I will obviously also build this up quite significantly, maybe get rid of some of the buildings that aren't all that interesting to us, but primarily this is a massive, massive population infusion, and that is exactly what we are in need of. All right, you know what? This game is really fun. We conquered this and look at our GDP, of course, exploding. I mean, that is just the way it works, right? Our standard of living is incredibly high. In fact, it is number one worldwide, but the performance is just so bad. All I'm going to do here is I think we're going to go and declare against the United States of America to get recognized. I just want to become a great power and then we're going to call it a day. Um... I think I can maybe handle this. We'll see. I think I'm ahead in tech and so on. Let's just check it out. I love it when Portugal just immediately abandons the United States of America. What is going on over here, by the way? Confederate, aristocratic, confederate, new... Av you know, I, I don't know. Oh, and I guess that is that. Yeah, um, we've defeated them pretty easily, I gotta add. And that means we will now be recognized. I think, yeah, there you go. We should immediately be a great power, and indeed we are. We are far above the requirement. Let's just check this right here. Our GDP, oh my god, Russia, what happened to you? Jesus Christ, your standard of living as well. Yeah, that's not looking good. Obviously, our GDP per capita is absolutely amazing if you compare it to any of the AI nations. Uh, our GDP, of course, you know, not comparable to France or even Austria-Hungary for some reason. But I think we could easily get there if we just kept pushing. But man, I gotta tell you, performance just isn't good enough. Either way, this is how you do Lanfang. We definitely suckled on the teat of the British market. We made sure that our gold income was really good and... Then we just started recruiting more population by, uh, you know, for example, taking over Kyushu. What a fun run. I gotta tell you, I really had a great time with this one because it was so unique and so different. Henry, thank you for sending it in and I'll see you later. Alligator.